Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? I keep on tucking my hair behind my ears because my hair is getting so long on the sides, it like sticks out <laughs> from my hat and it looks so bad. Um, I'm gonna go outside here in just a second, but I'm waiting for this video that I did for my drama channel to get done rendering and then I'm going to um, start uploading it and all of that kind of stuff. And then um, I will go outside and finish my vlog. But until then, we're gonna sit right here and have a little conversation. A deep conversation. <laughs> that pause was my thumbnail, could you tell? A much needed conversation. Anyway, how are you guys doing today? How are you doing? Um, guess what? <laughs> I'm almost afraid to say it. I was going to take the whole day off. I really was. Um, I was going to take the whole day off, and I wasn't going to film any videos. But Bradley, do you want to say hi to everybody? He said, of course I want to say hi to everybody. Come here, honey. He said, I am so bored today. We got good night's sleep last night, didn't we? He said, we slept in. When I got up today, you still weren't up. He said, I know, but then I got up, and I went outside, and I ran all around, and I was barking at people. And then I had treats. And then I had my dinner. You had your dinner already? He said, oh yeah, I had my dinner at about two o'clock today. I think I need more dinner right now. You need more dinner? <laughs> he said, yeah, I need more dinner. Uh, there's like one of the dinners that we bought, like Alex put like two of them out last night and then I put another one. And there's only one of them that he didn't like. But then he started eating um, some of that and then Alex put two more down and he ate those. And the one that I put down today, he ate. So he's like, I get to try it. It's like a buffet of different dinners for Boo Radley over here. He's loving it. So if you didn't watch my um, Peter Does Stuff video yesterday, I did a haul of treats and foods for Boo Radley because, well, he says, I'm not really sure what I like to eat anymore. So we're trying to find something that he likes to eat. He loves the, his uh, milk bone treats though that come in the Christmas shapes. What's your favorite? He said the star, because I'm a star, because whenever I pull out the star, I always go, Boo Radley, look, it's a star, just like you. So yeah, so um, last night, what was last night? Last night was Sunday. Well, I filmed some videos, and then I went upstairs, and I tried to lay down and take a nap for a little bit. Um, I laid down at like 7.30 or something, and I tried to lay down, I set my alarm for like 9.30, Alex was kind of like in and out of sleep all day long. And then when I got up, well, I never really fell asleep. I'd fall asleep for like 10 or 15 minutes. I'm having such a hard time. Like the other night um, when Alex was, what was that, Saturday night? That was like the first time that I like fell asleep, fell asleep during a nap um, in quite some time. But I'm like having such a hard time like taking naps. I know when I say that, somebody will be like, Peter, two nights ago you took a nap, and I, that's why I said Saturday. But, like, you, I used to be able to regularly take naps every day and still fall asleep at night. Um, I just, I have a hard time, like, taking a nap. So, I got up, and Alex was like, I'm going to go to back to bed. He had been, like, ever since brunch, we got home from brunch yesterday, he'd been, like, sleeping, and then he'd get up, and he'd eat a little something, take Boo Radley out, and then, yeah. You got to go out a lot yesterday, didn't you? He said, I love running around in the yard. I love saying hi to the neighbors. Um, so Alex like slept off and on all day yesterday. Went to bed real early last night. So I got up and he was getting ready to go to bed and then uh, for the night. And that was like, I think it was like, actually I don't even think it was 9.30, I think it was like nine. And um, I came downstairs and I was like hungry, so I got some stuff out to eat and just kind of like some snack stuff. And then I started, I wanted to watch something fun last night. I'm like so into some of these like really heavy reality shows like 90 Day Fiance. I now have three 90 Day Fiancés to catch, well two and a half 90 Day Fiancés to catch up on. Um, oh, you are sliding. He said, yeah, because you were sliding on the computer, so you're gonna start doing some computer work. He said, I need a job as an editor. I think I could be your editor. <laughs> you do? You think I need an editor? Yeah, Dad, because your videos are crap. <laughs> you don't edit. Well, boo, you're not the first person to tell me that. <laughs> so, 
I knew that RuPaul's Drag Race UK, I didn't know if the whole season was over or whatever. I haven't watched the last season of, it's the fifth season of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. I wasn't even sure I'd seen the fourth one, but I had. And I haven't seen the last season of RuPaul's Drag Race uh, Down Under. So I started watching RuPaul's Drag Race UK. I watched the first episode and I got like halfway through the second episode. But then I was like, I think I need to um, start watching um, some of these reality shows that the light is so bad in here, isn't it? It's because the window is behind me. I don't know if you can see, but we have these huge windows up here. Do you see where that's coming from? There's like huge windows up there. But anyway, um, I was like, I need to start watching some of these reality shows. Um, because I have like three or four to catch up on. And I, I wanted to watch The Garden last night. I also wanted to watch uh, Love After Lockup because it comes out on Fridays and I hadn't watched it yet. And I wanted to catch up on some of these um, 90 Day Fiancés because I put so much time and effort into it. I just have to say, like, I'm, not, I'm just like really not into a lot of the couples that are on the show. Like, none of them really interest me that much. I kind of was really into it when I started it. Like, I was like, oh, I love this and whatever. And I'm just kind of like, not into it now. Caroline was telling me the show that she's watching on Netflix. What is the show called? Hold on a second. The show is called something. Hold on, because I talked to Caroline last night. What is the show called? Escaping Twin Flames. She said she thinks it's going to be a good one. She said it's something to do about religious families or groups or she loves all those religious like documents oh you're back you want to come back up here again sweetie you come up here and then you want to jump down again oh come here oh big boy you're a big boy he said i'm a big boy and oh you can smell that lip gloss can't you you want some lip gloss on he said well i don't i have thin lips dad <laughs> so that lip gloss would when I go in for a kiss, when I have lip gloss on, I just kind of put my nose in there. I don't really like kissing them because I don't want it to get on my kiss fur. Right, honey? He said, no lip gloss on my fur, please. Yep, Dad's going to schedule a grooms for you because your hair's getting so long. He said, oh, no, I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, you need to get groomed because your hair is... He said, oh, no, I'm an adventurer. I'm growing my hair out long. <laughs> I'm a hippie now. You're a hippie? He said, yeah, I want long hair. I'm a hippie. <laughs> Boo rally. You are so much happier when your hair's short. He goes, oh, no. Oh, no. I need my hair long. I like my hair long. <laughs> Do you even know that there's a camera there? Do you have any clue? What if dogs know, like, everything that we're saying? Like, what if they understand everything that they're saying? They understand everything that's going on. Like, what happens in that little brain up there? Do you ever wonder that with your pet? Do you have a cat or a dog or a bird or anything? Like, what happens in that little brain of yours up there, huh? What are you thinking about all day long? He said, I think about treats, and I think about food, and I think about, yeah, all kinds of stuff. He said, I think about more than you think I do, Dad. Um, so I started watching RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 5, and um, I like it so far. I like that this season and this cast. I watched, maybe I got through the first two episodes, I think I just watched the first episode and a half. Anyway, and then, because at that point, after getting the food out and everything like that, it was like 11, or I think it was like, a, oh yeah, it was 11. Oh, because Alex woke up and he came downstairs. Maybe I did watch both of them, because it was like two hours later. He came downstairs and got a glass of water. And he was like, what are you watching? I said, RuPaul's Drag Race UK. And he was like, okay, I'm going back to bed. I was just getting a glass of water. And his water has to be ice cold from his pure water tank in the refrigerator he won't drink any other water <laughs> so um i mean he will like he'll drink bottled water and stuff like that but he will like if i ever like if he says can you get me a glass of water and i get it out of the tap he'll let he won't drink it he will not drink tap water so um so he's like what do you watch i was like rupaul's drag race uk and i was like it's still so early he goes it's oh oh it must have been 11 30 because he was like it's 11 30 it's almost midnight and i go it's like really early for me i like i lay down and all this kind of stuff. And it's so funny because yesterday I filmed like four videos. Let me show you what I've been doing. Hold on a second. Because I'm trying to kind of keep to... So here's my list for today. My little private things on the bottom that I have to do as far as appointments and stuff like that schedule. But I've been keeping 
like all the videos I've been making, I've been keeping them and crossing them out. So like yesterday, no, that was Saturday. I actually didn't do one of these lists yesterday because I had planned to take the whole day off. So then I like how many videos I make, I like circle them on how many channels. So today will be two out of seven because this is going to be the last video that I filmed for today. And then I'm done. I'm just going to relax. Alex is actually going to Cheesecake Factory. He was supposed to go with two of his girlfriends, his friend Sarah and his other friend. They were supposed to go somewhere else for dinner. But then his other friend is sick, and so she canceled. So he's just going with Sarah to Cheesecake Factory. And he asked me, he was like, do you want to go? And I said, no. I said, you guys just go. You haven't done anything for a while, just the two of you together. And I said, you guys just go, and I'm just going to relax at home. And he was like, do you want me to bring you anything? And I was like, hmm. Cheesecake Factory has really, really good nachos. I love their nachos. And their Impossible Burger with fries. So I don't know, I might have him bring me something. If not, I'll probably order a Piata. I actually haven't had Piata in a couple days. So I might order some Piata. But yeah, so I was like, it's, it's so early. It's like 11.30 or something like that. And he was like, it's almost 12. I'm going back to bed. I'll be up early tomorrow. So anyway, so he went to bed. And then I went out on the front porch. I had my heated vest on. It was kind of cold out last night. I had my heated vest on and my coat and my boots and my socks and all this kind of stuff. And um, I was like, I'm going to listen to like another half an hour or an hour of my book because I was reading Mother Daughter Murder Night, which was my October book for Peter's Book Club, and it's by Nina Simon. So I looked. I had started the book on the 11th, on November 11th, okay? Well, I finished it last night. It has been a long time since I have sped through a book that quick. Bo Bored to Death, The Cozy Mystery, that was the first book for the November book for Peter's Book Club. Like, I read it pretty fast, too. I mean, maybe three days or something like that. It was much shorter than the other one, but I tore through listening to this book. I thought it was fantastic. It's kind of being... Um, categorized as a cozy mystery, I didn't really feel like it was a cozy mystery at all. Um, it reminded me a lot of like the woman in the window or the girl on the train, minus like the drinking and things like that. I mean, there's drinking in it, but it's like minus all that. It really reminded me of that kind of mystery. It is so good, you guys. Um, I, so it's called Mother Daughter Murder Night, and it's by Nina Simon. Apparently, it was because um, I posted it on my Instagram, and the author reached out to me, and she was like, "Thank you so much for um, posting this. I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. I thought that was really nice." So anyway, she DM'd me that, but um, I I did not know that it was a book pick of Reese's Book Club. I had no idea about that. And it was on the New York Times bestseller list. I think I knew that it was on the New York Times bestseller list. I think I read that when I like read the book synopsis because I was like, how has this book been out in such a short period of time and it's on the New York Times bestseller list? Well, now I know because it was part of Reese's Book Club. Oh, you got that horrible uh, reverse coughing, buddy? That reverse sneezing? Come here, honey. You come here? He is on the chair right now. He was like, I am not being bothered. I'm on this chair. And you can see my Christmas candles are right there. Let's see? My Christmas candles are right there. Anyway, um, so I like sat outside last night, drank two cups of coffee, and uh, finished that book. It was so good. I loved it. I actually was like, because I think this is her debut book. She's written like something else like a year, tons of years ago or something, or part of an anthology or something. Oh, he's digging in the chair again. You digging in the chair? If I show him, he'll stop. Are you digging in the chair? <gasps> He's so cute, isn't he? But anyway, um, so yeah, so like it was her debut book because I was like, oh, I want to read something else by her. I haven't felt like that about an author in a long time. I will say the C.J. Connor book was really good, but like I was reading the the the, um, oh, the reviews of this mother daughter murder night book. Honey, you keep on having that reverse sneeze today. You okay, bud? He's like, I'm fine. I'm back. I'm going back to what I was doing before. Um, so there were a lot of really good reviews on it, but people were like, it was amateurish. It was like a senior writing project. It was like this. I was like, I didn't get that feeling at all. I thought the writing was fantastic. Um, you okay, honey? Well, 
Our vet told us that like so many dogs have that, have that reverse sneezing thing. I like panicked when he first started having it a couple years ago. She's like, it's totally normal. A lot of doctors have it. In fact, or a lot of dogs have it. In fact, I was like so freaked out about it. And she like showed me this video or whatever. Cause I think I had taken a video of him having it or whatever. And then, or no, no, no. I, it was when we were in there with him. And she showed me this video and she was like, is this what it was like? I was like, this is exactly what it's like. She's like, oh yeah, it's reverse sneezing. And she's like, this is what a lot of dogs have. So my video is almost done. Um, rendering. Rendering means like when I put it into the edit on iMovie and then it transforms it into a form where you can upload it to like YouTube or other forms like TikTok or Instagram Reels or Stories and stuff like that. So anyway, um, I finished that book last night. It was so good. And then I started, because I have a list of books I'm trying to get caught up on, which let me just tell you right now, the books to read. So I had on there Bored to Death, which is the first book for November, and then God Rest Ye Murder Gentlemen, which is the second book for November for Peter's Book Club. Then Kitty Genovese, which is the True Crime Book Club for October, and then The Girl in the Leaves, which is the True Crime Book Club for no uh, September, which I thought I had read the September book, but I hadn't. Then Mother Daughter Murder Night, which was the October book for Peter's Book Club, and then The Saturday Night Ghost Club. I still haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna wait till the beginning of the year to read that. So after that, I started reading Kitty Genovese, which is actually really, really good. I started listening to it last night. I listened to about 20 minutes of it, and I really, really like it. And that is the October book for Peter's Book Club, or True Crime Book Club. And then after I listened to like 20 minutes of that, then I went in and I started watching, what did I watch first? Oh, I watched Love After Lockup last night. And then um, Love After Lockup is an hour and a half. And when I got done with Love After Lockup, I bet it was, I think it took me like two and a half hours to finish the book. So that would have been like plus breaks, like 2.30. Then Love After Lockup would have been like four-ish, 4.15. And then The Garden. So yeah, it would have been five because I went to bed about five last night. And drank my tea while I was watching that and took my trazodone. And, um, come on. What's going on? Why is it not letting me do this? What is going on? Just update your computer and then it's like you don't know what's going on because everything looks different. <laughs> I'm so not technological at all. Um, like, my mom so would have wanted, like, social media and computers and all that kind of stuff, but she wouldn't have iPads, and she wouldn't have understood smartphones. She wouldn't have understood any of it. I would have been, like, spending the majority of my time on the phone trying to explain this stuff to her. So, anyway, um, so, yeah, so then I watched Love After Lockup and then The Garden. I really like that show, The Garden. That Are you back? He said, yeah, I need he loves to have underneath his neck scratch. Look, it's his favorite thing in the entire world. Um... So yeah, so after that, I watched The Garden, and then, what else, boobs? That's when I went to bed. I had my sleepy time tea and my trazodone, and I went to bed. I actually felt asleep pretty quick last night, and deep sleep. And then Alex got up and was going to work, and he asked me, he was like, did you give Boo his medicine already? Because sometimes when I go to bed really, really late, I give Boo his medicine before um, I go to bed, so Alex doesn't have to, and I was like, no, because I went to bed early. Like. I, we don't give him his medicine before like 6.30 or 7 in the morning. And then I go to bed at like 5. So he woke me up and kissed me goodbye. And then he gave Boo Bradley his medicine. He gave you your medicine, some treats this morning, didn't you? Didn't he? He said, yeah, my dad loves me. And then Boo Bradley and I snuggled back into bed. And um, yeah, we slept today. Had a nice long sleep. It was really, really nice. And okay, come here, honey. He is like wanting so much attention right now. Ugh. You are attention seeking little guy, aren't you? He said, Well, yeah, that's my job. My job is to get attention from my dads. Your dad is going to have. I mean, did I just kiss him with all the lip gloss? But the lip gloss is pretty much off my lips by now. That lip gloss doesn't last very long. Um, your dad's having dinner tonight, but he said it's only going to be an hour. So he'll be home early tonight. And then we can finish watching some shows and you can hang out. He likes to sleep on Alex's lap when we're watching TV shows because Alex will put on that Snuggie. 
he is so obsessed with he gets everybody those gifts for christmas last year he got his grandma and his cousin one and his aunt one those snuggies he like swears by them i feel like you're kind of starting to slowly fall a little bit mister okay come here for a second oh there you go yeah He, you can't see him the way that I can see him right now, but he's just kind of like sitting up like this <laughs> with his paws on the, the table. He's such a little gentleman. Look at this. <laughs> You're such a little gentleman, Boo Radley. He said, I'm here to do my schoolwork, please. <laughs> can I do my schoolwork? Where's my pencil? Oh, I think somebody's getting tired. Are you getting tired? What's your favorite place to get scratched? He said, underneath my neck. I love it so much. He said, it makes me feel so good. Okay, well, Daddy's, hold on a second, because Daddy's got to, okay, I got to put up this video, honey. Hold on just a second. So, do, 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 do. I'm every woman. So yeah, then I got up today, and I feel like there was something else I wanted to share with you guys, but now I don't remember what it was. Something that happened last night. So then I got up today, and took him out, and I got some coffee, washed my face. I've been using those Hims products that I bought at Target, because I kind of wanted to try them for a week and review them. Last night I used like the wrinkle cream, and then I didn't buy, I don't know if they have a face wash. I'm sure they have a face wash. I didn't buy it. Um, they didn't have one there. If they have, look at that. This is my new screensaver. It's like all this bright orange and red. Hold on a second. There you go. Ooh, that's a little bit too much, isn't it? Should we go outside? Well, let me take him outside for a little bit and then um, to run around and then I will go outside and I will finish this vlog out there. Okay, so I'll be back in two and two. Okay, I'm back. I was like, should I start my vlog over? But I'd already been vlogging for like 20 minutes. So I was like, no, I don't think so. But anyway, can I just tell you one thing is that when I got my new reading glasses, I started keeping them in the green. So Caddis has these reading glass cases that you can buy. I think they're like 15 or $20. And they're made from apple peels, which I think is so cool. And very, you know, sustainability and all that kind of stuff. And so I have a couple of them that I've ordered, right? Well, when my new reading glasses came, I started trying to keep them in the reading glass cases in the island in the kitchen so that I knew that those were the new ones. Like the blue ones, which I already scratched in the middle. I cannot believe it. And I know exactly how it happened and when it happened. But, um, so the other ones, and I have, these are the old pair. <laughs> I can now tell, because I can kind of tell like how they bend, because these I've been using for a while. So they like, the other one is kind of like, they slowly bend at first. So I'm gonna have to put those on the inside into that, the green case, because this is what's happening. So now I have like two pairs of the clear ones, and then I have like two pairs of the black ones, two pairs of tortoiseshell, the blue ones. I have these one that I got that are like the, the horn room glasses, but I don't like them because they have, so like these just have like the plastic nose things. These are very comfortable. But the, the ones that are like the horn rim ones, they have like the, the two like nose pad things. They're not comfortable at all. I don't like them, I never wear them. Um, so yeah, so, I have um, been keeping them in those green packages. Well, or those green pack, uh, what, what do you call them? The reading glass cases. Well, what happens is, so at night, like if I'm watching a show out here, I'll like take them in and then I just put them on the island because I'm so tired and I don't put them back in the case. I usually keep, this is OCD organization. I usually keep this pair, because these are the older ones. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but they're so dirty and so like, like in the middle, they're smudged like permanently. Um, but I keep these and I keep a tortoise shell pair right next to my computer and those are the ones that I use the old pair The other two pair that I have that are new because I lost a pair in San Diego on the uber the two new pairs that I keep um, On the island in the cases I usually use those to watch my TV shows because I want to be able to watch my TV shows clearly on the iPad and stuff like that and so I just leave these by the computer because I don't really care if I can, you know, when I'm like doing work on the computer, like how clear it is and stuff like that. I mean, I can still see the computer. It just, it doesn't, you know, I mean, I clean them off and stuff like that. It just doesn't need to be perfect. So, and I think that one of the reasons why my glasses scratched so much and got so smudged was because like when I'm working on the computer, 
I'll like have them on to like look at the computer and then I'll like take them off like this and then I'll like put them on top of my head sometimes. Not very often, but sometimes. And then I'll take them down and put them on the counter and then, you know, it's just like I'm constantly playing with them. I understand now why, like when I was growing up, you know, you'd always have that joke about the library and they had the reading glasses like on the necklace thing. I totally get it now. <laughs> Like, I keep reading glasses, like, in the, like, my little pouch of my hoodie, like, right here. I keep them in here or in my pocket all the time. Because I feel like I need them all. Like, Alex is always wanting to show me stuff, like, on his phone. He's, like, he still forgets. Um, because we were, it was, like, last night or the night before, we were laying in bed. And he was, like, hey, look at this. And he, like, held the phone. I said, babe, I can't see that. I go, let me get my reading glasses, because I always have reading glasses in the bathroom, reading glasses in the, in the, because I, like, to do certain things in the bathroom, I have, like, right where my colognes are and stuff, to do certain things in the bathroom, I have to have my, like, to shave sometimes, not always, but it depends on the light in the bathroom, I have, like, the time of day, sometimes I have to have my reading glasses on, oh, to trim my, uh, my fingernails, I have to have my reading glasses on, I can't see it at all, I know it sounds crazy, but, like, now, and Caroline and I were talking about this the other day, this is hard as far as like watching TV and almost kind of why I, ra I prefer watching shows on an iPad when um, I'm eating because now to eat my food and enjoy it and see what I mean. I know sound, if you're there, you'll understand it. I have to have my reading glasses on to eat so that I can see. Hey, how are you? Your hair looks so pretty. Thank you. You're welcome. She was like, thank you. <laughs> um... I met her at the pool at the very end of the year with uh, my favorite neighbor in the neighborhood. She was up there with her. But anyway, she's lived here, I think, for a long time and sat on the board and stuff like that. But anyway, um, so yeah, I have like reading glasses in like every room, right? So I have reading glasses in the bedroom. They're like my least favorite reading glasses I ever bought. I think they're the Caddis Miklos. I don't even know if they make these anymore. It's M-I-K-L-O-S. Isn't that like a city in Greece or something like that? But anyway... And they're like a light blue, and I just don't like the shape of them. The color is okay. I like the color, but I don't like the shape of them. But I will say they're pretty comfortable. The bigger they are, the more comfortable they are sometimes, interestingly enough. But I always like, so like Alex is like, show me. I go, let me grab my ring glasses. So I had to grab my ring glasses, and I had to clean them off because they were dirty from just sitting over there next to the bed, you know? So anyway, um, yeah, but it gets so annoying because you like can hardly see anything at all. And now like I can't even, like I mean I can see my food to eat. Like it's not like I can't see my food, but like if I want to like see what I'm eating or enjoy it, you know what I mean? <laughs> so then you have to have your reading glasses like this. Is my neighbor coming out? I swear that garage door was up. So then you have to have your reading glasses on like this. This is what my dad did for years where he had the bifocals, you know, or he'd be like this, like watching TV while I was like looking at a book or something like that. I become that person. <laughs> I don't mind wearing reading glasses. I never in a million years ever thought it would be this early in my life. I feel like everything's happening to me. Well, you know, like my grandma, the old urban legend, I don't know if it's an urban legend or not, but my mom and my aunt swore by this, that like at the, the day that their dad, my grandfather died. So my mom was four, my aunt was six when their dad died of lung cancer. And he was 30... My mom said 36, but he was, we found out, Caroline and I found out he was 39. Um, or maybe my aunt told me that, but we found out later anyway. So, supposedly the day that he died, or like the day after, my grandma's hair turned completely white. Like, that's the whole, like, you know, the folklore of the family. I don't know if that's true. My grandma was like white from that, like full on white, like this way. Um, my dad started going, and I think you get your hair from your mom's side of the family. Yeah, you do. And so my dad started going like salt and pepper, I would say like late 30s, 40-ish. But my dad had really, not, his hair's all white now, like mine. Um, and my dad has a beard that's all white. But for a long time, he had like a salt and pepper beard. My beard is very similar to my dad's. Um, but he, my, it's so funny because I always get this comment from so many people. My dad's like always like, he's like, I wish I could grow a beard like you because his beard is a little patchy. And I'm like, what do you mean? People say this to me all the time. It's like one thing I never even realized. I never thought I would have a beard, first of all. Like my mom did not like me with any facial hair. So if my mom was alive today, I would have no facial hair. Like she just did not like me with facial hair. She liked me with like my face. She always said, your face is so smooth and whatever, you know. And if I ever say anything about growing facial hair, she'd say, oh, you don't know. You don't need facial hair. Your hair looks, your face looks so nice without any facial hair on it and stuff like that right so 
I never thought I would have like a mustache or a beard or anything. I mean, I honest to God, never thought about a goatee. I never thought about a mustache or a goatee. I mean, I know those things are like kind of like today, but like when the whole goatee phase kind of came around, I was like, no, that's not for me. The beard came when we were in Las Vegas for a wedding and um, I had forgotten to bring my electric razor, which I also shave. So I like to shave with like a straight razor, like the Harry's razors, like here, 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 and all around here. And so, but I hadn't brought my electric razor. At that point, I was doing kind of like a five o'clock shadow kind of thing. And I was doing like on the one, like, like you can go through like one through like, I don't know, eight or something like that on the guard. And it was doing a one and it was really low. Well, I forgot to bring my electric razor. Well, at that point, that was gonna be, we were there for 11 days. So unless I shaved every single day and it was clean, um, then it was going to, uh, and I was completely clean shaven every single day. I was going to grow out a beard. I grow a beard very, very quickly. Like I have to trim my, I have to trim my beard this morning. I have to trim my beard like every two days, something like that and shave this part. This part right here, especially down here, like grows out very, very quickly. So it was like our second day after, no, I think it was the day after our wedding. And I said to Alex something to the effect of, I think I'd shaved for our wedding. Maybe it was two days after that. And I was like already getting a lot of growth. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about like, I don't remember when it was, but anyway, I said, I'm thinking about like growing my, growing a beard out. Like, what do you think about that? I didn't bring my electric razor, so I have to shave every day if I don't do that. And he was like, I think that's totally fine. Do it. I think you'd love it, you know? So that's when I started growing my beard out. So that was 12 years ago. I've had a beard for 12 years. Um... And I get people all the time will say to me, like, how is your beard so perfect? I totally do not see it, in all honesty. Like, I see a lot of people that have really, really nice beards. I actually wish I could keep my beard a little bit longer. But one of the things about my beard is when my beard grows out, like, my beard grows out like this, if that makes sense. Like, you know people that have their beards that go down like that? I would keep it a little bit longer if it did that, but my beard doesn't. It grows out like that, and I don't want that. So that's why I keep it, like, sh I use a number two guard on the electric razor. Um... But people are always like, how, like, your beard is, like, per I mean, I don't, like, this is how my beard naturally grows. I literally just sh shave the stubble right here. It's just a little bit. And this hardly ever grows in. There's nothing I really have to shave there with cut for every once in a while. And, but down here is, like, where my neckline goes down long. So, um, but, like, I have so many, like, women will come to me and be like, my husband wants to grow a beard out so bad. Like, what would you recommend? And, like, they, like, they have a whole patch over here that's missing. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, I mean, this is just what happened when I grew a beard out. Um, so yeah, so um, my mom, she didn't actually start going white or gray until later in life, but she always colored her hair. And she wanted to go all white, but she asked me, she's like, do you think it'll age me? And I used to talk about this all the time in my vlog that I feel like it's double standard, you know? Because I do think that like with men, like when I started growing my hair out, salt and pepper and gray, like I loved it when it's salt and pepper. Like, I mean, I like the all white, but like the salt and pepper, I get so many compliments on the color of my hair. People think I like do stuff to color it and whatever. I don't do anything. Years ago, there was this model that was older and I reached out to him because he said something about like coloring his hair. He responded to me. It was really nice because he was like a huge, this is before I was on YouTube or anything. Um, he had like a huge following and I reached out to him and like DMs on Instagram and I said, you said something, he had like posted something about his hairstylist, like telling him to use laundry detergent or dishwashing detergent or something like that on his hair to, to bring out like, kind of like when you use like, um, you know, like the shampoos to take out the bronzing and stuff like that. And he told me what he did and I've never been able to remember it. He was like, yeah, like once a month I use... I think he said it was like laundry detergent or some, it has some like bleaching factor to it. Like to just like take away all of like the whatever on, um, on the, uh, on the hair. But I started using, I like, so I like shampoos and conditioners that make my hair feel really, really clean. Cause I feel like they lift all of like the product and everything off that, which I, I mean, I use a hat every single day. So unless I go somewhere, I hardly ever put product in my hair. Um, but I like shampoo and conditioner that makes my hair feel really, really clean. I think I was saying that, did I say this earlier in this vlog or did I say it in my drama video? I don't remember. But I've been using those Hems products. I don't necessarily love the face moisturizer and last night I used the, the anti-aging cream. It's okay. I, I don't remember what video I said it in. So if I already said this, I said this. But anyway, the shampoo and the conditioner I really, really do like though. I will say that. Um, it's like a thickening shampoo and conditioner. It's supposed to like help thicken your hair, which I don't really need anyway. 
obviously, but my hair just kind of lays flat. That is one thing, is that condition of my hair changed. Also, I have this scar that goes right through my head right here. Feel it, it's like dent. Where they did the staple my head back together. Um, so my hairline and my hair grows a little bit different because of that now. Um, but yeah, like my dad has really, really thick hair. My mom, she had alopecia and lost all her hair, but then she, like later in life, always had really, really thick hair and stuff like that. Um, my aunt had thick hair, but her hair she colored dark brown like her entire life. Um, so I don't know if that's true about my grandma, like when her, my grandma, her hair went white. I know that my entire life of knowing my grandma, my grandma always had really, really white hair. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say about the double standard. Like my mom always wanted to grow her hair out like white so she didn't have to deal with coloring anymore, which I will tell you like not having to color your hair. Like, I mean, I used to be so concerned about like going out in the sun and going in the pool with the chlorine and it like taking off the color of my hair and spending so much money on the color of my hair. I was going every three weeks to get my hair color because my hair was, the regrowth was like completely like gray. And um, so I was like so worried about that. The one thing that I love the most about having my hair out now is that, first of all, I can use any shampoo and conditioner I want. I don't really think about it, you know? Because like before, it was always like the color-saving shampoos and conditioners and spending large amounts of money on that, you know? And I used to use, I think that my favorite was the Aquage. Um, and I still love Aquage products, but... But now being able to go into a pool and not have to worry about that, actually like the sun, the pool, like being in the ocean, all that kind of stuff, like it makes my hair whiter, which I kind of like in the summer. Um, but you know, when I started growing my hair out, I started getting hit on, I've never really gotten hit on by a ton of like gay men. I've always gotten hit on, like it's so funny because as soon as I start moving and talking, I think they figure it out pretty quickly. But like before I do, if I'm standing in a gas station, I get hit on by a lot of women. And um, <laughs> no, but like if I'm gonna get, I'm not a lot. Like it's not like they're just like dying. But like if I'm gonna get hit on, I'm gonna get hit on by a woman that is, you know. And um, I've had so many women just be like, oh my God, your hair is gorgeous. I love your hair. And I'm like, thank you so much, you know. And um, that never happened to me before. Like, before my hair started growing out, I never got hit on really by anybody. Um, I think the double standard is that, like, men, as they grow their hair out or they get, you know, older and the wrinkles and all that kind of stuff, it's like, oh, men are wiser and all that kind of stuff. And there's, you know, but a lot of people say, like, men age, you know, like, men, like I think I look better now than I looked when I was, like, 25. Like, in all honesty, I do. It's a different, it's a completely different look, but I think I look diff better now. I mean, like, the way I could still, you know, lose some weight and get back. And I was definitely in better shape at 25, you know, I was running every day and all that kind of stuff. But, um, but, like, with women, I think, like, that was my mom's fear was, like, it would age her. And she's like, do you think it'll age me? I said, yeah, I think it'll age you overnight. And I think that's a double standard, you know, is that women are held up to this idea that they have to keep up their youth, you know, which is why I love... Like, I love the Joan Didion Celine campaign where she had her hair, hair tucked behind her ear and the big black sunglasses on. I think that's one of the reasons why I love the Caddish reading glasses campaigns. They talk about, like, aging. That's why I love the idea of aging authentically. You know, it's just, like, accepting your age. Um, like, I have a friend of mine that... She don't ever watch my videos, so this is safe to say, and she's a very sweet person, but, like, she tries real hard. You know what I mean? And, actually, I haven't talked to her in a really, really long time, but, like, just seeing her pictures and stuff, like, she, she's, like, older than, Tom, like, I think she's, mm, I'm trying to think of how old her husband is. But, anyway, she just tries really hard, and, like, anytime Tiny sees pictures of her, she's just, like, it makes me kind of sad. Like, she's just, you can tell she's trying so hard to keep up, like, at some point. It's not like you have to put on a granny sweater, you know, or something like that, but it's, like, um, I just want to step into my age and enjoy my age and enjoy my life without feeling like I have to look like the youngest thing out there. I'm not the youngest thing out there. I know that, right? Like, I'm not trying to be that, whatever. I'm going to wear what's comfortable and do what's comfortable. Hey, if, if that's what makes her happy, be that. Um, 
but when you're surrounding yourself with a lot of people that are, you know, in their mid to late 20s and you're 60 and you're trying to keep up with that, like, that's hard, you know? Like, I can't um, imagine that. Like, I think that that would be, like, hard, you know? So... We're all gonna age. We're all gonna get older. You know, when people come for me on like my like my age, like in the like when people don't like me and they come for my age and stuff, I'm like, do you think you're not? Gonna, it happens to all of us. Do you think you're not gonna get older someday? Like it happens literally to all of us. You know, like I don't know if you're like in Death Becomes Her and you took the potion from Isabella Rossellini, which I used to love, by the way. But and I love that movie and I love Isabella Rossellini. But I don't know if you think that that I, I just love that movie. So I haven't watched that in a while. I think the last time I watched it was like two years ago. It was just randomly on and I watched it. But I'm like, none of us are going to be here, you know, at 100 looking fantastic. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. I think that's why I like the idea so much about aging authentically. Like, I don't a lie about my age. I feel like my friends don't either. My friends that are, my, my, all my friends are women, right? Well, the majority of my friends are women. I don't feel like my friends that are women lie about their age. I think they're proud of their age. They're proud of, you know, how they look. Does that mean that my friends don't color their hair? No, Tanya colors her hair, you know? She proudly colors her hair and pays money for it and, you know, and, and wears clothes. But, like, I think, like, like Tanya's a good example of this. Like, Tanya's style is so cute. Like, um, what's that brand she likes that you guys know? Free, free People or whatever. Like, she loves those long, flowy dresses and the shirts and all that kind of stuff but that's like her style you know like Tanya I feel like as Tanya has gotten older has like stepped into her style like it's just such cute style you know and and just is so like unapologetically herself and wears what she wants to wear and stuff like that but at the same time like isn't trying I don't know like I feel like I have friends of mine that are still trying to like hold on to like 25 and, and I also have noticed this I will say like one of the things is that my friends who have kids that are like in college or getting out of college I feel like they're the ones that are struggling with it the most it's kind of like to some degree like I, I remember my mom saying this like she used to think that my dad would be really jealous of me like in my like 20s or 30s which never really happened but she was like I think he's gonna have a really hard time with it you know, because I think that he's going to struggle with the idea that you're, like, out there, you're young, and you're doing all this kind of stuff, which was never really the case. My dad is actually somebody that's always, like, embraced his age. And, um... But, like, I see friends of mine that, like, they have kids that are, like, in their 20s, and it's like they're reliving their youth again. Like, fr these aren't friends of mine in recovery. Like, friends of mine that are, like, partying and going out all the time. And I'm like, I don't even have the energy to do that, like, once every two to three weeks. Like, how are you doing this three nights a week at 65? Like, if that's what you enjoy, more power to you. Like, I'll support you as your friend. But, like, I don't know. It just makes me, I don't know. It's just, like, I don't get it sometimes, you know? I think that's one of the things that, as I've gotten older, too, like, I don't do things that, this is going to either be, like, I can tell this conversation right now as I'm saying it, is either going to be, like, a, like people are going to chime in and share their experience, or it's going to be a really unpopular opinion. I just know that right now. Um, and when I say that about, like, going out and partying, I'm talking about men and women. I'm not just talking about women. Like, I'm talking about friends of mine that are couples, and it's like... You know, their kids are, like, married, and now they're, like, out at the bar every weekend until, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. And they didn't for, like, 20 years. And it's like, okay, they're reliving their youth a little bit. I think there's a lot of ways to relive your youth by, like, traveling around the world, going here, doing that, doing that, you know, whatever. But, like, I don't know that I want to be 65 in a bar till 3 o'clock in the morning. I did that. Like, I don't... I don't know. I mean, if that makes them happy, you know, but I just... I don't know. I feel like a lot... Of people that I, I mean, you definitely, as you get older, you see your mortality, but I don't know that I want to see my mortality and feel like I need to live it out in a bar. You know what I mean? Like, I got to have these, push these days out. I'd rather spend time with people that are important to me and do things. Like, this is the one thing I was going to say that I have, like, learned as I've gotten older is I do not have a problem saying no to things I don't want to do. Like, I, I, I believe in suiting up and showing up. I'm not talking about that. Like, I think there are things that you have to show up for in life. I'm talking about doing things that I don't want to do, you know? And my, my husband's really who taught me that, and he's much younger than I am. He's 12 years younger than I am. He doesn't do things he doesn't want to do. If he gets invited to something he doesn't want to do it, he says no. Now, he is a... My husband is the epitome of sitting up and showing up. He shows up to everything. I'm not talking about, like, a baby shower, a wedding, you know, a funeral, a birthday party. I'm not talking about... That's the kind of stuff you show up to, right? I'm talking about, like... 
just a dinner on a Tuesday night. If he don't want to do it, he don't do it, you know? If he gets too tired, he'll be like, oh, like, you know, sometimes he'll text me, he'll be like, oh yeah, I have plans to go to dinner tonight, and then by like five o'clock he'll text me and be like, I'm too tired, I'm just gonna come home, I canceled, and I'm like, okay. So, you know, like, he really taught me that, like, only go do things that you really want to do. I think that one of the things I've realized is life is precious. We only have so many hours in a day, you know, so many days here. And it's like, I don't want to spend it doing things that I don't enjoy, you know? Like, I mean, there's enough of that, of things we have to do in this world. You know, there are those things that we have to do, all of us in life, that we don't enjoy, you know? That the time that we have on our own that's ours to decide how we want to do. I'm not spending it doing things that I feel like I should do or things that I feel obligated to do, you know? Even if that makes me, people want to say, well, you're rude. I'm like, well, do you want me to show up and not want to be there? Like, you know, like that's my thing. The other thing that's happened as a result of that is that when I do go places and I show up, I'm so excited to be there because it's something that I really picked to do. Tanya taught me that. Because for years I would call Tanya and be like, do you want to go get a fountain cup? Fountain cock. A fountain coke tonight. She'd be like, oh no, babe, not tonight. Eric and I are watching a movie. Or I'd say, like, do you want to go do this? And you know, like two nights in a row, she'd say, no, I don't want to do something. And the third night, she'd say, uh, I'd say, hey, do you want to, you know, go to the Meyer? And she'd say, yeah, sure. And then I knew that because those other two nights, she didn't want to do anything and she was honest about it. So that third night, when she said she did want to do something, I knew she really wanted to be there, you know? And so that made the difference to me because I knew that when she was there, she was there because she really wanted to be there, not because she felt obligated. I don't want people in my life that are doing things with me because they feel obligated and I don't want to do things in, in my life and, and feel obligated to do it. I want people to know I'm there because I want to be there. I think that's important, you know? That's my little, my little deal for the day. Now I'm not sure if I should have Alex bring me something home or if I should order something. I'm not super hungry yet. So I think that... Um, in fact, we have something we're going to this week. Caroline's going with us. Um, I'm Alex's plus one. He kind of arranged the whole thing. I'm Alex's plus one, but we were both invited. Um, so we could have each taken a plus one. And that's not... Is that, I was like, is that what we're doing? So... And Alex and I are going together as each other's plus one, but then he asked me if I wanted to invite anybody, and I was like, yeah, let me ask Tanya and Caroline. Tanya didn't want to dip, go. Um... And so Caroline's going to go, and she's bringing a friend. And then Alex has a friend, two friends that are going together. So it's like the six of us that are going to this thing, which will be really fun. I'm really excited about it. Um, so that is this week. And then I think that's it. And tonight I'm just going to watch some shows and relax and listen to a little bit of an audiobook and all that kind of stuff. I'm not tired right now at all, So, um, but it is getting dark outside. It's a really pretty evening. Look at out. I know it looks like 3 o'clock in the afternoon probably to you guys, but it's like the sun's starting to set. The trees are so pretty, aren't they? I mean, we are probably a week out from all the leaves being gone off the trees. So anyway, I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, so yeah, so I'll fill you guys in on what I watched <laughs> tomorrow when I come back. <laughs> Now, I know I keep on saying this in, in vlogs, and I never do, but I probably am going to take a day or two off this week. Um, I think as far as, like, a lot of people have, like, mentioned it in my comment sections. Like, I don't, I don't, I feel like I'm, like, every day towards the end of the day, I start feeling like I'm kind of getting sick, but I'm not sure if I'm tired if I'm getting sick. I think it would be just good for me to force myself because I feel so compelled, like today I'm just making like two videos, like the vlog and the drama video, but I feel so compelled every single day to film videos. I think it would be really good for me to force myself not to film videos for like a day or two. So I might do like tomorrow and Wednesday or Wednesday and Thursday. I don't know which days I'm gonna do. Wednesday is cousin fun day with my cousin, so I might do Wednesday. Um, and I'll just have to see how I feel when I get up tomorrow. But I think I'm gonna take a day or two off probably, you know, two in a row or one here and one there or something like that. I just think it would be good for me to just force myself to just, you know, read, clean some stuff around the house, listen to audiobooks, and just kind of like enjoy the day. Um, I have filmed videos so consistently for the last couple weeks, so I think that would be good for me. And so many of you have mentioned in the comment sections, I've been really supportive, so I just want to say thank you. So, with that being said, I'm going to get off here. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Monday and a fantastic beginning to your week. And if nobody else has told you this today,
I love you. Remember these three very important, I feel like I'm a uh, flight attendant. Remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want or your week. You can start your, you can start your week over if you need to. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Like I always say, you might be putting a smile on their face. You might be cheering them up. You might be making them happier than they already are. And you might just be making them feel not so all alone, you know? And also be kinder to one another, love one another a little bit more. And most importantly, be kinder and love yourselves a little bit more because the kinder you are to yourself and the more you love yourself, the more you will be kinder to others and the more you will love others as well. And I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you. Oh, and for those that need to hear it and those that want to hear it and the, all the rest of you out there, one more I love you. I love you guys so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you. Happy birthday, Lena.